All right, now that we have a basic idea of what differential equations are, and if someone gives us the solution, we can check the solution, we should start moving toward actually being able to solve them on our own. Um, in 9.3, we're going to get some algebraic techniques. Um, but before we do that, we're going to get one approach that is strictly graphical. And it maybe is going to feel like we don't really solve these things at all. That's just a graphical method. But it turns out a lot of differential equations can't be solved algebraically. Whereas this graphical method will pretty much always work. So suppose we've got a differential equation here. This one says that the derivative of some function um, is equal to x squared minus x times the function. And I don't have any idea what function works that way. But I can talk about the derivatives of this function because this, this does say y prime equals the derivative of the function equals. Um, so let me just make a little a little chart here. Um, and let me just say that this function, whatever it is, if it goes through the point, I'm just going to pick this at random. If it goes through the point 1, 1, I can figure out its slope there. Uh, because I can just plug 1 in for x and 1 in for y, right? And this thing tells me what the slope will be. So at... 1, 1, the derivative of the function will be 1 squared minus 1 times 1. Uh, the derivative will be what um, will be 0. And if I started to draw ooh, a set of xy axes, I know the tangent line or the slope of the function at one particular point at 1 1 right here <laughs> uh, I know that the slope of the tangent to the function uh, would be 0 would be horizontal uh, let's check just a couple others here uh, I'm just gonna make up another point at random let's say how about 2 1 Okay, so when you plug in 2, 1, the slope is, let's see, x is 2, so 2 squared minus 2 times 1. So that's 4 minus 2, so the slope is 2 at that point. So at one more point, let's see over here at 2, 1, so at this point right here at 2, 1, I know the slope is 2, so I'm just going to sketch in a little tangent line that looks like it has a slope of about 2. Um, and I can do this for a few more points. Let's maybe do... Um, let's do 0, 1. I don't know why all my y values are being 1. It doesn't have to be that way. Uh, 0, 1, so if you plug in 0, 1... 0 for x, uh, you get a slope of 0. So I'll go ahead and... plot that. And let me do a point that doesn't have a y coordinate of 1. How about... <clears throat> how about 1, 2? So if you plug in 1 for x and 2 for y, let's see, that'd be 1 minus... To, so this would be negative 1. So at the point 1, 2, which is up about here, uh, the slope's actually negative 1. Okay, I've just done four points. And in the xy plane, guess how many points there are? 
infinitely many don't have to be at the integers. I could certainly be doing this at one half comma 0.7 or something, but uh, you get the idea that pretty quickly that this is tedious and it is tedious. And you know what's really good at tedious things? Computers. Yay, computers. Uh, so there are lots of websites and calculators and stuff out there that draw these things. These are called slope fields, by the way. It's a field full of the slopes. <laughs> um, my favorite one is one that's a, on a website called GeoGebra. I'll put the link in the uh, Canvas page. Uh, but let's take a look at what they've got. Um, so this is the GeoGebra slope field plotter. And I went ahead and just typed x squared minus xy uh, in here. And you can see that they've got the ones that we did already. There's my zero, zero slopes at, at those two points. And the slope of two was there. And I think a slope of negative one was right there. Right, so those match the, the four points that I made. And of course, they've been able to do a lot more. And uh, the beauty of this is I can increase the density uh, to put these. So now they've evaluated it a lot more points than just the integers, obviously. <clears throat> and you can start to see that there's actually a flow to this thing. Like maybe if you knew that the point, <clears throat> sorry, that one point on the original function we still don't know any points on the original function, but if I knew, if someone told me that the uh, function went through maybe zero one, I could kind of track through. I could see it's gonna go down a little bit and then it seems like it'll go up and then the other direction down and, and get down that way. Oops. And these four little check boxes down here allow you to uh, turn on four different solutions essentially and they just sort of start at random points like this one said what if you start at 2 negative 1 this is how you would track through but I said more like 0 1 uh, so you can drag these points around and see what the solution would look like if you started at 0 1 and your homework asks you to do this uh, for a few different graphs um, and you can Likewise, say, oh, what if it goes through um, 4, 0? And you can just drag this over here to 4, 0 and say, okay, that's what it would look like. It obviously takes a deep, deep dive <laughs> down there and it goes way deep. But um, yeah, so yeah, you can, you can track it through anywhere. So there's a few questions on your homework where they already give you the slope field and you're just going to draw on top of it. And I would recommend like taking a picture and pasting that into your homework and, or screenshotting it somehow and just drawing on top of that. But however you end up doing it, uh, it's fine. And then there's a few on your homework that give you the equation and ask you to draw the slope field. And that's where GeoGebra will really come in handy. Uh, you'll just be able to, and they even give you multiple ones sometimes. So you'll type in the equation and they say, how about zero three and how about Um, something else like one zero. If you want to get fancy, you can change that one to a different color. I thought you could change the whole. Hmm, I thought you could change the whole line, but anyway, uh, you can get the equations. Uh, the and so we still don't know the. Speaking of which, we still don't know the equation of the answer. I still can't say y equals sine of x or something, but. We definitely have graphs of the solution, even though we don't have equations of the solutions. And oftentimes that's good enough. You can say, hey, if it goes through one zero, where will it be at three? And you can say, oh, I know at three, it'll be over here. Um, okay, so let's talk about one more thing, which is I wanna talk about the phrase equilibrium solution. Um, so I'm just gonna steal one of the problems from your homework. Um, this is actually going to be number one. So for number one, oops, uh huh, hold still. Uh, for number one, the equation is y 
times one minus one fourth times y squared. Okay, so we've got this, and this is pretty similar to what your book has for number one. Let's see, the range is a little bit different. Um, but the part of the question in number one is what are the equilibrium solutions? And by equilibrium, they mean as time goes on, the limit as x goes to infinity uh, becomes a constant. So let me turn one of these back on. And notice that there's an equilibrium solution here. This point that went through 0, 3 eventually levels off at a value of 2. Uh, so there's an equilibrium solution that comes down and levels off at 2. So 2 is one of the equilibrium solutions. Um, notice that a lot of starting points end up at that equilibrium solution. Notice though that that's not the only equilibrium solution. Whoop, there's one right there. If you happen to start at zero, apparently you don't change from that. So there's another equilibrium solution at zero. Uh, there aren't many points. Matter of fact, you have to start at a y value of zero to get that equilibrium solution. It's very sensitive. Uh, but then there's another equilibrium solution at negative two. So it looks like if you started at a negative y value, you end up at negative two. If you start, oops, hold still. Uh, if you start at a y value of, yeah, of zero, uh, you have an equilibrium solution at zero. And if you start at any positive y value, uh, you have an equilibrium solution at two. Um, so that's the other thing that you're Book is going to ask you to identify is find some equilibrium solutions and they're just going to ask you to do it visually even without geogebra if you're just looking at the slope field in the book you should be able to see oh yeah it looks like a lot of ways it shoves itself onto two or onto negative two okay uh, that's it for 9.2 um, in 9.3 we will start looking at how to solve these things algebraically